This is a 2023 Kia EV6 GT Line 2, of course, built on the long range all wheel drive. However, this is the third time in a very short period that I'm behind the wheel of an EV6 because I'm really trying to like it, but I still can't like it because the driving position is absolute garbage for my cut. I understand all everyone's body is not the same, so for you it might work out. So I also wanted to give you an update with what's coming in 2024, what's changing with the EV6. So let's get started. First of all, how do you know that this is a long range all wheel drive GT line package 2? Well, first of all, it has the 20 inch alloy wheels. It supports the vehicle to load. It has the augmented reality heads up display. It has the quite okay Meridian premium sound system. It has a sunroof, leather suede seats that the seat itself actually feels quite good, but the driving position is just crap. It has heated and ventilated front seats, and it has heated rear seats, which is very appreciated. Prices for this model right here start at 64,995 Canadian dollars. In the US, it is 57,600. But in the US, you have a lot more options in terms of short range, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, whatever. In Canada, things are a lot simpler. Now for 2024, the trim levels will be the wind rear wheel drive, the land all wheel drive, and of course the GT all wheel drive. Prices are pretty much the same except the starting points. So for the base models, they're a little bit more pricey in 2024. Now, just to remind you that this thing is a dual motor all wheel drive vehicle. It has a single speed automatic transmission, a 697 volt architecture. It makes 320 horsepower, 446 pound feet of torque. It has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. The range is rated at 406 kilometers. Regarding charging at AC level two, it will do up to 10.9 kilowatts. DC fast charging, 350 kilowatts. It can go from 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes. And as we said, it also supports the vehicle to load. So you can power stuff from the car. It's not very long. It measures just under 4.7 meters. It's just under 1.9 meters wide. It's quite heavy, 2.1 tons. The trunk is pretty big, 690 liters. Not bad at all. And of course it has a power tailgate. The front has something so small that I'm not even gonna try to mention. This GT Line 2 trim package has the sportier bumpers and the rear, the bigger alloy wheels. It's closer to the GT model, but it has all the internals from the all wheel drive long range. Pedal to the metal, zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Comes in 5.2 seconds as we measured with our draggy. Zero to 60 miles an hour comes in 4.8. The reverse procedure, the brakes from 100 to zero came to complete stop in 42 meters, which is not that bad. The exterior, of course, is a pretty nice design. The EV6 is a good looking vehicle with the taillights that go from side to side, the daylights that are kind of like a V-shape. I really like the way this thing looks. I have no complaints. And the inside is also quite nice. The build quality is really good actually it has lots of piano black surfaces so fingerprints and dust does show up quite fast but you know what the materials are not bad at all build quality is nice it has this nice ambient lighting at night that also changes based on your driving modes the theme on the instrument cluster also can go dark or light it can also change based on your driving modes which of course are eco normal and sport you also have snow mode for slippery situations you have heated ventilated seats heated steering wheel all the features comfort features that you need wireless charging you have this dial thing for the gearbox a quite nice heads up display with augmented reality it shows you where you're going of course you have a sunroof nice black headliner the driving position is ultimately garbage because it's just the steering wheel had to be like a whole inch closer for me to be perfectly adjusted to this vehicle but i just can't get it right and if i do this to bring the the wheel closer i'm just too upright i feel like i'm uh, part of like a posturepedic group so no thanks the controls here for the climate and the navigation and stuff you can toggle between them um, pretty simple to use not very confusing it's okay once you get used to it the infotainment is straightforward simple but has one massive drawback it only supports wired CarPlay and Android Auto, which is terrible. The rear seats have plenty of room. There's a power plug underneath the seats, so it has like a household outlet for larger loads. Footroom, legroom, headroom is all very good. It's a very spacious rear, 
has ventilation on the sides, USB ports on the seats. It's pretty complete actually. On the road, the EV6 is a very smooth and very quiet vehicle. As long as you've turned off that stupid fake sounds for the engine, because we don't need that. The active sound design off is the best setting. The wheel has a pretty nice heavy-ish feel to it. It's pretty BMW-esque, I would say, in how it feels and how it it's pretty solid, nicely put together. Um, you don't feel torsional rigidity issues. It's a pretty solidly built cabin and the structure, everything is fine. The suspension is my first and struts in the front, multi-link in the rear, so pretty decent modern suspension layout. There's no active dampers or whatever, but you know what? It's well sprung. You can feel its weight, so in the corners, if you push too hard, it is a little bit sluggish. I mean, for an EV, it's actually pretty fine, but you know what? I don't really have any complaints in terms of handling. It's not as sporty. I mean, if you want full sport, you can go to the GT model. This one will hold the road. It's playful enough. I mean, enough to make my bags go flying in the trunk. Performance is more than adequate. I mean, being an EV, it has all that torque, so the moment you step on the gas, it goes flying. It has the one pedal driving with the eye pedal mode enabled. So once you let go of the gas, if you're an eye pedal, sorry, gas, I should start saying throttle pedal or whatever. See, complete stop and then complete launch. It's pretty good. I have no issues whatsoever. It's very smooth around town. It's good, makes these little whiny sounds in the background. It's comfortable over bumps too, I mean, it's a very, very usable and friendly vehicle. It has nothing exceptional, but nothing terrible. It's good at everything, which is exactly what it should be. Now, obviously the prices are a little bit high. Now that Tesla is cutting the prices, it's kind of screwing up everybody else. But you know what? Compared to a Model Y or a Ford Mustang Mach-E, I mean, there's a lot of competitors out there. Even its sibling, the Ionic 5, or if you want a sedan, you go for the 6. It's getting crowded out there. You have all the Volkswagen ID4, you have the Audi Q4 e-tron. So the landscape is filling up with cars at this price point. This is a very good one. Is it the best one? I don't know. The range isn't the farthest. It has pretty good tech, very nice convenience features. It's well built, good looking. I like it a lot, but again, this car is not for me because of how I'm sitting in here, which I absolutely hate. Anyway. So that's pretty much the crash update for 2023, 2024 for the EV6. It remains a top pick, but not for me. Anyway, if you like this video, please remember to share it with your friends, subscribe. But most importantly, till next time, be well. Bye -bye. Perfect.